Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Here are today's top headlines. The original cars are gets nailed with a massive fine. Ford says Opal should not get any government aid and used car prices continue to climb in the American market. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, April 16, 2010, and now the news. Stephen Ratner, the man originally picked to lead President Obama's automotive task force, is in serious hot water. According to the AP, his investment firm, the Quadrangle Group, has to pay $12 million in fines because of kickbacks paid to New York's government pension fund. Ratner left that group to join the automotive task force, but was later replaced because of these very allegations. He also faces the possibility of a lawsuit being filed against him from either the Security and Exchange Commission or New York's Attorney General. Ford says it is opposed to giving government aid to Opal. According to Bloomberg, the company's VP of Government Affairs in Europe says giving loans to Opal would give it an unfair advantage and could prevent Ford from getting rid of excess capacity in Europe. He also said that taxpayer money should not be used to restructure a business. Opel has asked European governments for almost 2 billion euros. David Strickland, the new head of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, went to Detroit last night to give a speech to the Society of Automotive Engineers. The Detroit News reports that his message was the need to make hybrids and electric cars noisier to make them safer for pedestrians, especially blind ones. He says NHTSA has initiated a research program to determine what to do. Well, here's my AutoLine insight. NHTSA is woefully short of resources, as the Toyota recalls have uncovered, and so it's pouring its limited resources into studying blind pedestrians? I don't have anything against helping blind pedestrians, but that's going to save what? A handful of lives? Why not go after a problem where we can really save lives? 55% of everyone killed in a traffic accident in the American market is not wearing a seatbelt. Shouldn't NHTSA put its limited resources towards saving, let's say, 20,000 lives a year instead of saving a handful? Well, here's a silver lining in the collapse of the new car market. A silver lining, that is, if you sell used cars. Auto Remarketing reports that wholesale used car prices just keep going up and up and up. They were up nearly 7% last month compared to a year ago and up 4% just from the month before. So what's going on here? Well, it's all because there's a shortage of used cars due to the collapse in sales of new cars. But it's not just supply, it's also demand. Retail sales of used cars are up over 10%. Autoblog's running this story from Fox News. Washington is the first U.S. state to pass a law phasing out the use of copper in brake pads. You heard me, copper. Pads containing more than 5% of the metal will be banned in 2021. That number could drop to almost zero by 2023 if manufacturers show that it is possible. Environmentalists say the metal poses a hazard to marine life, particularly salmon, one of the region's most valuable resources. It's also toxic to plankton. You know, the irony of all this is that copper is used in brake pads as a substitute for asbestos, which was banned in the early 1990s. From souped up sport compacts to wildly styled minivans, Japan is ground zero for some of the craziest car culture in the world. It's amazing what some drivers over there do to their rides. Autoblog's running this video that's posted on YouTube. It shows a car with some serious wheel alignment issues and almost unbelievable amount of negative camber. I wonder how long those tires are gonna last or the ball joints or the axles, the wheel bearings or the tie rods, any of that stuff for that matter. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the newest software that car companies are using to simulate everything there is about designing, engineering, and manufacturing cars. And I do mean simulating everything.
Automakers now have the design software that can enable them to simulate anything. One of the companies that's a leader in this field is Dassault Systems, and the CEO of the company is Bernard Charlet, my guest on AutoLine Detroit this week. In the following clip, he talks about how they're now simulating in 3D about how customers experience a car. It's what he calls simulating a lifelike experience. If you observe the society today on how the society at large create, create products, uh, because the challenge on engineering, materials, manufacturing, you know, the, the capital investment is such, there is such kind of concentration to deliver this new thing you want to deliver, that it's very easy along the process to forget what you want to deliver. It's easy to forget, it's easy to forget the goal. But what is the goal at the end? Any producer going to sell what he's producing to a consumer. The consumer or customer will be using it in real life. So let's assume we can find a way using 3D as a medium to represent the way this product is going to be used in real life and make this visible to everyone all along the product development. Then people will remember every day, every, every hour of the day, what is their goal. You can watch that entire interview on our website later today at AutolineDetroit.tv. And joining me on that show are Drew Winter from WardsAuto.com and Chris Sawyer from the website Cars in Context. Okay, it's Friday and you know what that means. Time to answer this week's trivia question. Up through the 1960s, AM radios in American cars had two little civil defense icons on the dial. In case of a nuclear attack, you were supposed to tune into one of those stations to get information. We asked you to tell us what this warning system was called, and the correct answer is Conelrad. And Conelrad stands for Control of Electromagnetic Radiation. And the winner is Ann Schultz from Oakland, Michigan. Congratulations, Ann. You just won a Ford Mustang baseball hat. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.